Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time visiting, thanks for stopping in and spending a little time with me today. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing the differences between the IQ7 and the IQ8 in-phase microinverters. So before we get started, I think it's very important to explain what a microinverter is and what it does and how it's different than a centralized inverter. So a microinverter is an inverter that we put just below the panel, whether it's on a roof or it's on a in-ground mount or wherever you have these panels placed, you put one microinverter for each panel. In a string inverter, you have one centralized inverter that all those panels feed that one inverter. And you could have it set up under two inverters, but they're centralized inverters for each array that you have built. Now the microinverters are set up in strings, and we'll talk about how many microinverters you could put on each string a little bit later in the video, so stick around with me and I'll touch base on exactly how many microinverters for each model you could put in each string that you're designing your build out for. There are clear advantages of having a microinverter over a string inverter. And I'll get into that in another video. But one thing to think about is with microinverters, let's say one panel goes down in your string. So let's say you have a branch of nine panels in your one string, right? One panel goes down. The other eight are still producing with microinverters. On a string inverter, one panel goes down, those nine panels go down. So it, it actually produces at the weakest link. So if you have shade, on one section of your branch, then it's gonna bring down the rest that's in, the rest of panels that are in that branch that have full sunshine are gonna be producing like they have shade on them. With microinverters, that's not gonna happen. Centralized inverters, you can put optimizers at the panel level. However, you're still tied to one centralized inverter. That one inverter goes down, that whole system is down. With microinverters, if one microinverter goes down, then you still have all of your other panels still producing. And it's very, 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 very unlikely that all of your inverters will go down at one time. But there is a possibility that a microinverter might fail, just like there's a possibility that a string inverter might fail. That's just something that you'll have to put into your plans what you think is best for you. I strongly believe that the microinverter is the absolutely best technology that we have on the market today. Four models in the IQ7s. There's the IQ7, the IQ7 Plus, the IQ7X, and the IQ7A. So there's four different models in the IQ7s. There is actually five different models in the IQ8s. So let's talk about the advantages of going with the IQ7s. This is the previous generation technology. It's great technology. It's gonna last a lifetime. This has over a million hours of testing behind it with 97% of proficiency. That is stunning. I mean, that is just, that's really good. So you're getting a really good high quality product, even if you go with the IQ7s. And you're gonna to have to determine which one of the IQ7 models that you're gonna be pairing with your panels. That's a whole separate video. This is, do you wanna get the IQ7s or do you wanna get the IQ8s? The IQ7s, if price is your number one priority, it's without a doubt, IQ7s are the way to go. So it may surprise you guys that when I built this solar system here, I chose to go with the IQ7 Pluses simply because price was my number one concern. And that way I can get my return on investment back so much faster. And this equipment on this side right here, this is actually for IQ7 Pluses. I would have had to use different equipment for IQ8s. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video. But if you're looking for value in a solar system and you're wanting to get your money back as fast as possible, there is no better choice in a microinverter than the IQ7s. They are equipped with the rapid shutdown, which isolates that solar system from the grid in a vent where the power goes out. And that is a requirement. You still get really good technology at a fraction of the cost that you're gonna go against the IQ8s. I personally picked up those microinverters, 27 of them, on an average of $100 a piece. And another very important point I should make about our system, I was not concerned about having a battery backup because we were on a one-to-one -one tariff. I'm gonna let the utility company be my battery backup, but we do not have power when the utility grid goes down. 
I want to make sure that I'm clear here. I'm not saying that the IQ7s are better than the IQ8s because that would not be true. What I'm saying is there are certain situations where I believe you should install IQ7s over the IQ8s simply because we got to find out what your priorities are. For us, it was all about return on investment. For you, it might be about producing power when the power is out, especially on a sunny day like today. The IQ7s cannot produce power when the power is out under any circumstances, whether we got sun outside or not. The IQ8s can do that for you. So basically anything that the IQ7s can do, the IQ8s can do as well, plus provide you power when the power is out. That sunlight backup technology that they have integrated with those new microinverters. So on a sunny day like today, if the power goes out, you would automatically flip and be producing power to your house. Now you wouldn't be producing to the grid, you would be producing it to your house because you would have a controller and that controller would automatically know that it's not connected to the grid anymore, it's only powering the house. So essentially what's happening is the IQ8s would be creating a mini grid and it's gonna be powering essential items that you need in your house. One very important point to make here is you cannot utilize that technology without adding a controller into your system design. So here we have a combiner box and this is another point. You cannot use this combiner box three using IQH. You'd have to have a combiner box four, which is more expensive. Then you'd have to have a controller, which is nearly $2,000. Then you'd have to have the IQ8s, which costs nearly double than the IQ7s. Now you can understand why I feel that the IQ7 Pluses were the best choice for us, but the IQ8s might be the best choice for you because the sun power backup option might be something that really entices you and that's what you want and it's really important to you. If it's within your budget, I would say go for it. I would 100% tell you to go after the IQ8s. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons of the IQ8s. The pros are you're getting brand new technology and you can power essential items in your house during a power outage, even though you might not have battery backup. The cons to this system would be that it's much more expensive to build out because you're not just talking about the IQ8 microinverters, you need a controller and you're gonna need the, the new combiner box as well, which is more expensive than the combiner box three. The combiner box four costs a couple hundred dollars more and then the controller costs nearly $2,000 more. And then your microinverters themselves, like I said, are gonna be nearly double the cost of what the IQ7s are. And to put this right up there with the most important con of them all is the backup energy limitations. You cannot power your entire house with the IQ8s with just that sunlight backup system. If the power goes out, it's for essential items only. So if you're under the impression that you can get full power out of the system to power your entire house with IQ8s, I feel like you might have been misled because this is for just essential items during a sunny day. Now to determine what model, whether you chose the sevens or the eights, is something you're gonna to have to determine with the panel that you select. And that's gonna be for a whole different video, but I did make this chart that I'm gonna put up on my website under this blog the IQ7 versus IQ8s. You can go in there and check that out, read the entire blog, get a little bit more detail. That's gonna be at justinsproject.com. That's www.justinsproject.com. And you'll have all this information. I'll put some useful links in there as well, like being able to find the compatibility between the microinverter and the panels, and just different things where you can actually print out the data sheets for the sevens and for the eights. I'm gonna to try to add as much useful information in there that I can find for you guys. So be sure to check that out. I'm gonna leave all that stuff in the description below as well, but you'll have all of these charts over on the website. I actually made this chart because I wanted to make it easy for you to find this information. So the IQ eights, you could put a max of 16 on a string. The IQ8As, you could put a maximum of 11 
on each string. Uh, so when you're building out a solar system, that's very important. Also is what panels does the eights and the seven work with? That's very important. Make sure to check that out. So the choice between the IQ sevens and the IQ eight really depends on your situation and what's important to you. If it's important to you to have some sort of backup, then the IQ eights are gonna be your only choice. If you're looking to save money and be able to get a better return on your investment in a shorter amount of time, maybe not better, but in a shorter amount of time, then the IQ7s are your better choice. So with that said, if the IQ8s, if you can find IQ8s for the same price as IQ7s, 100%, I would have grabbed the IQ8s and I would have figured out how to just go ahead and fork out a little extra money to get the controller. Now, here is a point to make. If you're going with a battery backup system and you're going with IQ7s, you're still going to have to buy you a smart switch, which costs almost as much as the controller. So if you're going with a battery backup system, I would say your best investment is going to be those IQ8s. As always, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Hopefully you learned something from this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. It really helps me out a lot. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and tap that little notification bell. So when I put out new videos like this, you get notified. I'll catch you in the next project.